Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the IMO shortlist 2023 problem N8. At first, let's take a look at the problem statement. We are asked to find all functions from the positive integers to the positive integers, satisfying that f to the power of b f of a of a plus 1 is equal to a plus 1 times f of b for all positive integers a and b. Here, f to the power of n of a means applying f n times on a. Let's denote the assertion that this equation here is true by p of a, comma b. We see that the approach of plugging in small numbers into the equation does not work in this case. And therefore, we have to do something else in the beginning. So let's try to collect some properties about this function. And here, first of all, I want to note that on the left hand side, we have f of something. And therefore, everything on the right hand side can be attained by our function f. We especially see that the factor a plus 1 on the right hand side can be arbitrarily large. And therefore, the right hand side can be arbitrarily large, which implies that our function f is unbounded. This allows us to make the right hand side of our equation arbitrarily large for constant a plus 1. In particular, after applying f on a plus 1 for a certain number of times, we can't end up at a plus 1 again. This brings us to the slightly more general claim that for no k in the positive integers, we have that f to the power of k of a is equal to a. For a greater than or equal to 2, we are already done as I described before. Because if we take a look at the sequence a, f of a, f squared of a, and so on, then this equation would imply that this sequence is periodic and therefore bounded. But this gives us a bounded left-hand side here, independent of b. But as we have learned before, the right-hand side is unbounded, and therefore this is not possible. So it's left to consider the case that a is equal to 1. Here we want to make a proof by contradiction. So we want to assume that we find a case such that f to the power of k of 1 is equal to 1. And it is indeed enough to assume that we can find a positive integer b satisfying f of b is equal to 1. By taking a look at p of c, comma b, we get that f to the power of b f of c of c plus 1 is equal to c plus 1. By taking, for example, c equals 1, we are again in the first case for which we already have proven that this is impossible. This gives us also a contradiction in our second case, and therefore the claim is proven. Moreover, we figured out that we can't find a value b such that f of b equals 1. Let's erase the proof of our claim and write this fact down. As a next step, we could try to find out if our function f is injective or not. For this, consider different positive integers x and y, so for example x greater than y, such that f of x is equal to f of y. We want to take b equals to x and y into the functional equation because then the right hand side stays the same. Hence, by setting b equals to x and b equals to y on the left hand side, it should be the same. So we get that f to the power of x f of a of a plus 1 is equal to f to the power of y f of a of a plus 1. This is a contradiction to our previous claim which can be seen if we rewrite the left-hand side. Namely, this is just equal to f to the power of x minus y, f of a, of f to the power of y, f of a, of a plus 1. Since x is greater than y, we see that this exponent here is positive. And moreover, the argument here is equal to the right-hand side. So we are indeed in the case of our claim and thus get a contradiction here. From this argument, we can note down that f is injective. Let's try to figure out how we can use this fact. And normally, when we want to use the fact that a function is injective, it would be great if we have an equation where on both sides we have something of the form f of something. Taking a look at our given functional equation, we see that this is indeed given on our left-hand side, but unfortunately not on the right. So our goal is, to modify the right-hand side in such a way 
that we can apply the functional equation again to get something similar to the left hand side. The easiest way of doing this is to get the right hand side symmetric in A and B. We therefore want to consider P of f of a minus 1 comma b. And here I want to make a short note that this is no problem because we know that f of a is greater than 1. This implies that f to the power of b f of f of a minus 1 of f of a is equal to f of a times f of b. And now by switching a and b we also get that this is equal to f to the power of a, f of f of b minus 1 of f of b. We can now use that f is injective and erase one f from both sides until at one point either on the left hand side there is a single a or on the right hand side there is a single b. If a is not equal to b, then after erasing the f's we cannot end up with a equals b. And therefore we know that on one side we only have the latter and on the other side we have some f's. Therefore f attains at least one of the values a or b. Since we already know that f never attains the value 1, we can just take b equals to 1 and then we directly get that the function f will attain the value a. In other words, we know that f attains every value greater than 1. So let's write this down. Moreover, to get equal arguments on both sides, we can plug in b equal f to the power of k of a, which yields f to the power of f to the power of k of a times f of f of a minus 1 plus 1 of a is equal to f to the power of a times f of f to the power of k plus 1 of a minus 1 and now plus k plus 1 of a. Using that f is injective again we can erase f's from both sides until at one side there is only an a left. And now using the claim we know that on the other side there is also only an a left. Hence we apply f on both sides on a equally many times and therefore our exponents are equal. To get a product on the left hand side let's moreover erase the one. This equation is not really nice but since we have a product on the left hand side we can try to use this to get some divisibility conditions. To better understand what we should search for let's take a look back to our original functional equation. We see that a plus 1 divides f to the power of something of a plus 1 and therefore we want to try to consider this case. Taking a look back at our red equation we see that if a divides f to the power of k of a then the left hand side is divisible by a and the first sum on the right hand side is divisible by a. And therefore we also get that k is divisible by a. So let's write this down. Applying this result to our previous observations from above, we get that the statement here implies a plus 1 divides b times f of a. Taking b equals 1, we get that a plus 1 divides f of a. And therefore we have that a plus 1 is less than or equal to f of a. Recall that f attains every value greater than 1. Together with this inequality here, we can conclude that f cannot skip any number and therefore this implies that f of a must be equal to a plus 1. We can plug this back into our original functional equation and indeed see that this works as a solution. And therefore we found this solution which is the only solution and we are done.